All right, so now I'm going to show you guys just how to set up one of these pose readers, Marco's pose readers. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, import the pose reader and quickly set it up here. So just as a first sort of a thing, we'll just show you how I've set up animated the scene. So just rotate that arm down there. Uh, we can see that we've got um, these Euler rotations here. Now I've just done a little animation on it to the same place so that we can see these Euler rotations with a, a completely different number. So we can click between those and we can verify that those uh, Euler values are, are flipping and doing weird things. So that will check to see if our pose reader is actually working correctly. Now, uh, the first thing that we really need to do is uh, is just import our pose reader. So once you, you just go file import and just import it in. And once you open it up, it should look something like this with just a few locators. The main ones you need to know about is this base lock. Uh, we've got the target lock and we've got this pose locator. Uh, the pose locator is the one that we're actually moving towards the target. So if you're imagining the lines, it would be between these two and it would also be between these two. So there's our sort of cone angle. So uh, as you can see, we're sort of moving towards that and getting closer to a value. Now I could snap that with the vertice snap and we'll get a value of one just to test that that's working. So that's all cool. All right, so this is the one we want at the base of the joint. That's the actual target pose. Uh, position that we need and this one will be moving with the arm as it sort of rotates so let's pick switch back on our, uh, our I'm just going to move these aside and switch on our bunny rig yep uh, there we go so all we need to do is just theoretically we just parent these into the rig so we're just going to parent that one to that that one to that one which is our shoulder joint so we'll parent that in grab this guy just zero him out, it's fine. Uh, so you'll see that he's actually gone and disappeared and snapped to that guy. So now we wanna snap uh, the actual uh, pose locator to uh, this guy. So that's uh, just a matter of selecting one and then the other, hitting P, and then we can zero this out again, and that will snap it to the elbow. Now to get the correct position for our target, we can select this guy uh, again and parent it to the elbow. Uh, and we're going to hit zero. And now I'm going to unparent that. So I've just left the uh, blend shape on from the last lesson. So I'm just gonna select that. I'm actually gonna delete that node so there's no blend shape happening yet. Uh, and that's how it works. So I've unparented that. Now if we look at our outliner, we can see that our target locator is the only one left. We've got this empty pose reader group that we can just delete. Uh, and our other two locators, are here and we can we can bring them up there and you can sort of see how this is sort of working as it sort of rotates down towards that target pose and we can verify that this is going to work because we're going to check out our output and there it's zero and as it comes down and approaches our pose uh, we can see at frame 10 it actually equals one which means our blend shape can we can plug that straight into our blend shape and everything will be working fine uh, just another thing to remember is just play around with your cone angle because uh, if you have a very s small number so I'm just gonna make this 90 you can sort of see as we scrub along in in the frame here it's the output doesn't actually come on until quite late in that game. So it depends on how you want the blend shape to come on as you can muck around with this cone angle. And for this example, I think 135 works pretty well. You can sort of see it's pretty much switching on as soon as it comes down. All right, so now that's set up, the last thing we need to do is just parent this to something properly. Uh, and in this case, we're gonna parent it to the actual clavicle. So let's parent it in there. And that just means that if the clavicle moves, everything's going to move and our blend shape's not going to spaz out. Uh, but if we rotate this, of course, that locator will be left behind uh, by itself in order for those two to sort of hit each other and zero out. So there we go. That's our pose reader really set up. This is like the, this is like the most the easiest way to set up a pose reader. Uh, there you go. It's an in our rig and it's ready to go. Uh, now all we have to do is plug in our blend shape. So I'm going to open up the blend shape that I've previously made. So just load this guy up. This is a, a corrective blend shape that I've made already with our Extract Deltas plugin. And we can select this guy and then select this guy. 
and go create the forms blend shape and just make sure that we have front of the chain on. So <coughs> once that's been made, we can go here and we can see our blend shape and we've got our fix, which doesn't look so great there, but when we put it in its pose, we can see that that fix is just filling out that shoulder nicely for us. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is now that it's in the right pose is we want to connect this to our output from that locator that we had a minute ago. So just hide everything so you can see it. And I'll just bring this up so we can select the locator we want, which is this one. There's our output value. That's the one that we want to plug into the blend shape. So let's just open up the connection editor. And it's our, this guy is our driver, so to speak. So I'm going to reload him down the bottom. We've got our output. Now for the, we want to plug this into the blend shape. So just switch our polygons back on, select this guy. Usually I like to select the blend shape there. Edit, select node. And now we can reload right. And the actual big buck bunny extracted shape, this one we want to change, is under weight. So if you go weight and then click on that. And I'm just going to go down to frame 10 so that you can see it sort of taking an effect when we click on it. That connection's now been made and you can see that switching on and off nicely. Watch the value, it's at zero, and we can step through, uh, step through frame by frame, slowly going down, and you can sort of see that blend shape sort of switching on, so we know that that's working. And just as a final step, just to test this out, we want to see if uh, it's working for both of these angles, if it's the oilers working. We can see the blend shape still on there, still on here, so we're getting around our problem. And that's really how to set up the pose reader and to, to get your blend shapes happening on that. It's a very easy rig. Now, the only thing that we do need to be aware of, and I'm just gonna show you guys this very quickly, is that it is pretty, it can be a lot heavier. Uh, this system, uh, the pose reader, has got a lot of nodes attached to it, and that's just purely for the, uh, that's just purely for the maths that's required in order to extract those vector angles. Now it's it's not, uh, not none of these nodes are doing anything particularly fancy, so it's not super heavy, but if you start layering up, you know, 20, 30 nodes in your scene, as Marco says, it's gonna slow down your, your, your computer. So just keep that uh, nice and light. I only put in a few pose deformers, pose readers where you need them. A lot of them can really just go on the Euler rotations. Uh, things like elbows, for example, really only rotate on one axis. So you only, so it's fine to hook your blend shapes up just to the, the old school Euler uh, parts. You don't need to have these fancy pose readers for every corrective blend shape on your on your rig. But for shoulders and, and elements with this large degrees of freedom, then it really comes in handy. So there you go, that's the setting up the pose reader um, uh, on a real life example of a rig.